The Urnfield culture c. 1300 BC to 750 BC was a late Bronze Age culture of Central Europe, often divided into several local cultures within a broader Urnfield tradition. The name comes from the custom of cremating the dead and placing their ashes in urns which were then buried in fields. Over much of Europe, the Urnfield culture followed the Tumulus culture and was succeeded by the Hallstatt culture. Linguistic evidence and continuity with the following Hallstatt culture suggests that the people of this area spoke an early form of Celtic, perhaps originally Proto-Celtic. <laughs> Chronology It is believed that in some areas, such as in southwestern Germany, the Urnfield culture was in existence around 1200 BC beginning of Hallstatt A or Ha A, but the Bronze D. Riegsi phase already contains cremations. As the transition from the Middle Bronze Age to the Urnfield culture was gradual, there are questions regarding how to define it. The Urnfield culture covers the phases Hallstatt A and B, ha a and B in Paul Reinach's chronological system, not to be confused with the Hallstatt culture ha c and D of the following Iron Age. This corresponds to the phases Montelius IIIV of the Northern Bronze Age. Whether Reinach's Bronze D is included varies according to author and region. The Urnfield culture is divided into the following sub-phases based on muller karp sen the existence of the Ha B3 phase is contested, as the material consists of female burials only. As can be seen by the arbitrary 100 year ranges, the dating of the phases is highly schematic. The phases are based on typological changes, which means that they do not have to be strictly contemporaneous across the whole distribution. All in all, more radiocarbon and dendro dates would be highly desirable. Origin The Urnfield culture grew from the preceding tumulus culture. The transition is gradual, in the pottery as well as the burial rites. In some parts of Germany, cremation and inhumation existed simultaneously Some graves contain a combination of tumulus culture pottery and Urnfield swords or tumulus culture incised pottery together with early Urnfield types In the north, the Urnfield culture was only adopted in the Ha'a II period. 16 pins deposited in a swamp in Elmusen K.R. Bad Abeling, Germany cover the whole chronological range from Bronze B to the early Urnfield period ha -A. This demonstrates a considerable ritual continuity. In the Loire, Seine and Rhone, certain fords contain deposits from the late Neolithic onwards up to the Urnfield period. The origins of the cremation rite are commonly believed to be in Hungary, where it was widespread since the first half of the second millennium BC. The Neolithic Kukuteni Tripolia culture of modern day northeastern Romania and Ukraine were also practicing cremation rituals as early as approximately 5500 BC. Some cremations begin to be found in the Proto Lusatian and Triceniac culture. <laughs> <laughs> Distribution and local groups The Urnfield culture was located in an area stretching from western Hungary to eastern France, from the Alps to near the North Sea. Local groups, mainly differentiated by pottery, include Novas culture in western and northern Bohemia, southern Thuringia and northeastern Bavaria Milovse culture in southeastern Bohemia Unstruck culture in Thuringia, a mixture between Novas culture and the South German Urnfield culture Lusatian culture in northern Bohemia, Lusatia and Palan South German Urnfield culture Northeast Bavarian group, divided into a Lower Bavarian and an Upper Palatinate group Lower Main Swabian group in southern Hesse and Baden-Württemberg, including the Marburger, Hanauer, Lower Main and Friedberger facies Rhenish Swiss group in Rhineland Palatinate, Switzerland and eastern France, abbreviated RSFO in French Lower Rhine Urnfield culture Lower Hessian group North Netherlands Westphalian group Northwest group in the Dutch Delta region Middle Danube Urnfield culture Velodice Bayerdorf in Moravia and Austria Kaka in Western Slovakia Gava culture Polini culture Kiatis culture Mako culture Sometimes the distribution of artifacts belonging to these groups shows sharp and consistent borders, which might indicate some political structures, like tribes. 
Metalwork is commonly of a much more widespread distribution than pottery and does not conform to these borders. It may have been produced at specialized workshops catering for the elite of a large area. Important French cemeteries include Châtenay and Lingelsheim Alsace. An unusual earthwork was constructed at Gollering near Koblenz in Germany. <inaudible> <inaudible> related cultures The Central European Lusatian culture forms part of the Urnfield tradition, but continues into the Iron Age without a notable break. The Polini culture in northern Hungary and Slovakia grew from the Tumulus culture, but used urn burials as well. The pottery shows strong links to the Gava culture, but in the later phases, a strong influence of the Lusatian culture is found. In Italy the Late Bronze Age Canegrate and Proto-Villanovan cultures and the Early Iron Age Villanovan culture show similarities with the urn fields of Central Europe. Urn fields are found in the French Languedoc and Catalonia from the 9th to 8th centuries. The change in burial custom was most probably influenced by developments further east. The Goliseca culture in northern Italy developed with continuity from the Canegrate culture. Canegrate represented a completely new cultural dynamic to the area expressed in pottery and bronzework, making it a typical Western example of the Urnfield culture, in particular the Rhine Switzerland Eastern France Urnfield culture. The Lepontic Celtic language inscriptions of the area show the language of the Goliseca culture was clearly Celtic, making it probable that the 13th century BC language of at least the RSEF area of the Western Urn fields was also Celtic or a precursor to it. Placename evidence has also been used to point to an association of the Urn field materials with a Proto Celtic language group in Central Europe, and it has been argued that it was the ancestral culture of the Celts. The Urnfield layers of the Hallstatt culture, Ha A and Ha B, are succeeded by the Iron Age Hallstatt period, proper Ha C and Ha D, 8th 6th centuries BC, associated with the early Celts. Ha D is in turn succeeded by the Latine culture, the archaeological culture associated with the continental Celts of antiquity. The influence of the Urnfield culture spread widely and found its way to the northeastern Iberian coast, where the nearby Celtiberians of the interior adapted it for use in their cemeteries. Evidence for east to west early Urnfield elite contacts such as rilled ware, swords and crested helmets has been found in the southwest of the Iberian Peninsula. The appearance of such elite status markers provides the simplest explanation for the spread of Celtic languages in this area from prestigious, proto-Celtic, early Urnfield metalworkers. <laughs> Migrations The numerous hordes of the Urnfield culture and the existence of fortified settlements hill forts were taken as evidence for widespread warfare and upheaval by some scholars. Written sources describe several collapses and upheavals in the eastern Mediterranean, Anatolia and the Levant around the time of the Urnfield origins. End of the Mycenaean culture with a conventional date of c. 1200 BC Destruction of Troy VC. 1200 BC Battles of Ramses III against the Sea Peoples, 1195–1190 BC End of the Hittite Empire 1180 BC Settlement of the Philistines in Canaan c. 1170 BC Some scholars, among them Wolfgang Kimmig and P. Bosch Gimpera have postulated a Europe-wide wave of migrations. The so-called Dorian invasion of Greece was placed in this context as well although more recent evidence suggests that the Dorians moved in 1100 BC into a post-Mycenaean vacuum, rather than precipitating the collapse. Better methods of dating have shown that these events are not as closely connected as once thought. More recently Robert Drews, after having reviewed and dismissed the migration hypothesis, has suggested that the observed cultural associations may be in fact partly explained as the result of a new kind of warfare based upon the slashing Naue-2 sword, and with bands of infantry replacing chariots in warfare. Drews suggests that the political instability that this brought to centralized states based upon Marianu chariotry caused the breakdown of these polities. Settlements The number of settlements increased sharply in comparison with the preceding tumulus culture. Unfortunately, few have been comprehensively excavated. Fortified settlements, often on hilltops or in river bends, are typical for the Urnfield culture. They are heavily fortified with dry stone or wooden ramparts. 
Excavations of open settlements are rare, but they show that large three to four aisled houses built with wooden posts and wall of wattle and daub were common. Pit dwellings are known as well, they might have served as cellars. Topic. Open settlements The houses were one or two aisled. Some were quite small, 4.5 meters times 5 meters at the Runder Berg, Uric, Germany, 5 to 8 meters long in Kunzig, Bavaria, Germany, others up to 20 meters long. They were built with wooden posts and walls of wattle and daub. At the Velities settlement of Lovchiki, Moravia, Czech Republic, 44 houses have been excavated. Large bell-shaped storage pits are known from the Novas culture. The settlement of Radonice contained over 100 pits. They were most probably used to store grain and demonstrate a considerable surplus production. Topic. Pile dwellings On lakes of southern Germany and Switzerland, numerous pile dwellings were constructed. They consist either of simple one-room houses made of wattle and daub, or log-built. The settlement at Zug, Switzerland, was destroyed by fire and gives important insights into the material culture and the settlement organization of this period. It has yielded a number of dendro dates as well. Topic. Fortified settlements Fortified hilltop settlements become common in the Urnfield period. Often a steep spur was used, where only part of the circumference had to be fortified. Depending on the locally available materials, dry stone walls, gridded timbers filled with stones or soil or plank and palisade-type Fossenschlitzmauer fortifications were used. Other fortified settlements used rivers bends and swampy areas. At the hill fort of Horovice near Barun CR, 50 hectares were surrounded by a stone wall. Most settlements are much smaller. Metal working is concentrated in the fortified settlements. On the Runderberg near Uric, Germany, 25 stone molds have been found. Hillforts are interpreted as central places. Some scholars see the emergence of hill forts as a sign of increased warfare. Most hillforts were abandoned at the end of the Bronze Age. As far as we know, there are no special dwellings for an upper class, but few settlements have been excavated to any extent. In the Francia Comte, caves were used as dwellings, perhaps in times of trouble. Topic. Material culture Topic. Pottery The pottery is normally well-made, with a smooth surface and a normally sharply carinated profile. Some forms are thought to imitate metal prototypes. Biconical pots with cylindrical necks are especially characteristic. There is some incised decoration, but a large part of the surface was normally left plain. Fluted decoration is common. In the Swiss pile dwellings, the incised decoration was sometimes inlaid with tin foil. Pottery kilns were already known Elchinger Cruz, Bavaria, as is indicated by the homogeneous surface of the vessels as well. Other vessels include cups of beaten sheet bronze with riveted handles type Genesevice and large cauldrons with cross attachments. Wooden vessels have only been preserved in waterlogged contexts, for example from Avernier Nucatel, but may have been quite widespread. <laughs> Topic. Tools and weapons The early Urnfield period 1300 BC was a time when the warriors of Central Europe could be heavily armored with body armor, helmets and shields all made of bronze, most likely borrowing the idea from Mycenaean Greece the leaf-shaped Urnfield sword could be used for slashing, in contrast to the stabbing swords of the preceding tumulus culture. It commonly possessed a ricasso. The hilt was normally made from bronze as well. It was cast separately and consisted of a different alloy. These solid hilted swords were known since Bronze D Rixheim swords. Other swords have tanged blades and probably had a wood, bone, or antler hilt. Flange hilted swords had organic inlays in the hilt. Swords include Avernier, Cressborn Hemikofen, Urbanheim, Moringen, Weltenberg, Hemikofen and Taklovice types. Protective gear like shields, cuirasses, greaves and helmets are extremely rare and almost never found in burials. The best known example of a bronze shield comes from Polzen in Bohemia and has a riveted handhold. Comparable pieces have been found in Germany, Western Poland, Denmark, Great Britain and Ireland. 
They are supposed to have been made in Upper Italy or the Eastern Alps and imitate wooden shields. Irish bogs have yielded examples of leather shields Clonbrin, Co. Wexford. Bronze cuirasses are known since Bronze D Kaka, Grave II, Slovakia. Complete bronze cuirasses have been found in saint germain du plain nine examples, one inside the other, in Mermes, Haute-Marne France, fragments in Albstadt Pfeffingen Germany. Bronze dishes may have been sewn on a leather armor. Greaves of richly decorated sheet bronze are known from Klostar Ivanich Croatia and the Paulus Cave near Buran Germany. Topic. Chariots About a dozen wagon burials of four-wheeled wagons with bronze fittings are known from the early Urnfield period. They include Harden der Alts K.R. Altading, Mengen K.R. Sigmaringen, Poing K.R. Ebersberg, Königsbronn K.R. Heidenheim from Germany and St. Sulpice Vaud, Switzerland. In Als, the chariot had been placed on the pyre, pieces of bone are attached to the partially melted metal of the axles. Bronze one part bits appear at the same time. Two-part horse bits are only known from late Urnfield contexts and may be due to eastern influence. Wood and bronze spoked wheels are known from Stade Germany, a wooden spoked wheel from Mercurago, Italy. Wooden dish wheels have been excavated at Corselets, Switzerland and the Wasserberg Buckau, Germany diameter 80 cm. In Milivse near Damaslis, Bohemia, a four-wheeled miniature bronze wagon bearing a large cauldron diameter 30 cm contained a cremation. This exceptionally rich burial was covered by a barrow. The wagon from a Cholshausen Bavaria comes from a male burial. Such wagons are known from the Nordic Bronze Age as well. The Skallerup wagon, Denmark, contained a cremation as well. At Pekatel K.R. Schwerin in Mecklenburg a cauldron wagon and other rich grave goods accompanied an inhumation under a barrow Montelius III, IV. Another example comes from Easted in Sweden. Southeastern European examples include Kenya in Hungary and Oresti in Romania. Clay miniature wagons, sometimes with waterfowl were known there since the Middle Bronze Age Dupliaia, Vojvodina, Serbia. The Lusatian chariot from Berg Brandenburg, Germany, has three wheels on a single axle, on which waterfowl perch. The grave of Gammertingen K.R. Sigmaringen, Germany contained two socketed horned applications that probably belonged to a miniature wagon comparable to the Berg example, together with six miniature spoked wheels. Hordes Hordes are very common in the Urnfield culture. The custom is abandoned at the end of the Bronze Age. They were often deposited in rivers and wet places like swamps. As these spots were often quite inaccessible, they most probably represent gifts to the gods. Other hordes contain either broken or miscast objects that were probably intended for reuse by bronze smiths. As later in field hordes often contain the same range of objects as earlier graves, some scholars interpret hoarding as a way to supply personal equipment for the hereafter. In the river trio, Coates du Nord, complete swords were found together with numerous antlers of red deer that may have had a religious significance as well. Topic. Iron An iron ring from Vorwald K.R. Grafschaft Diepholz, Germany dating to the 15th century BC is the earliest evidence of iron in Central Europe. During the Late Bronze Age, iron was used to decorate the hilts of swords Swabish Hall Galenkirchen, Unterkrumbach, K.R. Herzbrück and knives Dotternhausen, Plettenberg, Germany and pins. The use of iron for weapons and domestic items in Europe only started in the following Hallstatt culture. The widespread use of iron for tools only occurred in the late Iron Age Latine culture. Topic: <inaudible> Economy. Cattle, pigs, sheep and goats were kept as well as horses, dogs and geese. The cattle were rather small with a height of 1.20 meters at the withers. Horses were not much bigger with a mean of 1.25 meters. Forest clearance was intensive in the Urnfield period. Probably open meadows were created for the first time, as shown by pollen analysis. This led to increased erosion and sediment load of the rivers. Wheat and barley were cultivated, together with pulses and the horse bean. Poppy seeds were used for oil or as a drug. 
Millet and oats were cultivated for the first time in Hungary and Bohemia, rye was already cultivated, further west it was only a noxious weed. Flax seems to have been of reduced importance, maybe because mainly wool was used for clothes. Hazelnuts, apples, pears, sloes and acorns were collected. Some rich graves contain bronze sieves that have been interpreted as wine sieves This beverage would have been imported from the south, but supporting evidence is lacking. In the lacustrine settlement of Zug, remains of a broth made of spelt and millet have been found. In the lower Rhineurn fields, leavened bread was often placed on the pyre and burnt fragments have thus been preserved. Wool was spun finds of spindle whorls are common and woven on the warp-weighted loom, bronze needles were used for sewing. There is some suggestion that the Urnfield culture is associated with a wetter climatic period than the earlier tumulus cultures. This may be associated with the diversion of the mid-latitude winter storms north of the Pyrenees and the Alps, possibly associated with drier conditions in the Mediterranean basin. Topic: <laughs> Funerary customs. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Graves. In the tumulus period, multiple inhumations under barrows were common, at least for the upper levels of society. In the Urnfield period, inhumation and burial in single flat graves prevails, though some barrows exist. In the earliest phases of the Urnfield period, man-shaped graves were dug, sometimes provided with a stone-lined floor, in which the cremated remains of the deceased were spread. Only later, burial in urns became prevalent. Some scholars speculate that this may have marked a fundamental shift in people's beliefs or myths about life and the afterlife. The size of the Urnfields is variable. In Bavaria, they can contain hundreds of burials, while the largest cemetery in Baden-Württemberg in Dotmergen has only 30 graves. The dead were placed on pyres, covered in their personal jewelry, which often shows traces of the fire and sometimes food offerings. The cremated bone remains are much larger than in the Roman period, which indicates that less wood was used. Often, the bones have been incompletely collected. Most urn fields are abandoned with the end of the Bronze Age, only the lower Rhine urn fields continue in use in the early Iron Age sometimes even d. The cremated bones could be placed in simple pits. Sometimes the dense concentration of the bones indicates a container of organic material, sometimes the bones were simply shattered. If the bones were placed in urns, these were often covered by a shallow bowl or a stone. In a special type of burial bell graves, the urns are completely covered by an inverted larger vessel. As graves rarely overlap, they may have been marked by wooden posts or stones. Stone-pacing graves are typical of the unstruck group. Topic. Grave gifts The urn containing the cremated bones is often accompanied by other, smaller ceramic vessels, like bowls and cups. They may have contained food. The urn is often placed in the center of the assemblage. Often, these vessels have not been placed on the pyre. Metal grave gifts include razors, weapons that often have been deliberately destroyed, bent or broken, bracelets, pendants and pins. Metal grave gifts become rarer towards the end of the urn field culture, while the number of hordes increase. Burnt animal bones are often found, they may have been placed on the pyre as food. The marten bones in the grave of Sedin may have belonged to a garment pelt. Amber or glass beads are luxury items. Topic. Upper class graves Upper class burials were placed in wooden chambers, rarely stone cysts or chambers with a stone paved floor and covered with a barrow or cairn. The graves contain especially finely made pottery, animal bones, usually pork, sometimes gold rings or sheets, in exceptional cases miniature wagons. Some of these rich burials contain the remains of more than one person. In this case, women and children are normally seen as sacrifices. Until more is known about the status distribution and the social structure of the late Bronze Age, this interpretation should be viewed with caution, however. Towards the end of the Urnfield period, some bodies were burned in situ and then covered by a barrow, reminiscent of the burial of Patroclus as described by Homer and the burial of Beowulf with the additional ship burial element. In the early Iron Age, inhumation became the rule again. Cult 
The Kiffhauser Caves in Thuringia contain headless skeletons and split human and animal bones that have been interpreted as sacrifices. Other deposits include grain, knotted vegetable fibers and hair and bronze objects axes, pendants and pins. The ITH Caves Lower Saxony have yielded comparative material. In the Novus culture, human bones with cut marks and traces of burning have been found in settlement pits. They have been interpreted as evidence for cannibalism. As these bones form a large part of the burials known this may have been a quite regular treatment including the ritual manipulation and dismemberment of human corpses. Moon-shaped clay fire dogs are thought to have a religious significance, as well as crescent-shaped razors. An obsession with waterbirds is indicated by numerous pictures and three-dimensional representations. Combined with the hordes deposited in rivers and swamps, it indicates religious beliefs connected with water. This has led some scholars to believe in serious droughts during the Late Bronze Age. Sometimes the water birds are combined with circles, the so-called sun bark motif. See also Beaker culture Sirothaptic language Urnfield culture numerals References Bibliography J. M. Coles, A. F. Harding, The Bronze Age in Europe London 1979. G. Weber, Handler, Keeger, Bronzegier Castle 1992. Ute Seidel, Bronzetzeit. Württembergisches Landesmuseum Stuttgart Stuttgart 1995. Konrad Jazduski, Ergeschichte Mitteleuropas Wrocław 1984. Association A Bay de Daulas EDS, Avant Les Celts. L'Europe à Lodge du Bronze Daulas 1988. Franz Thuz, Nico Roymans EDS, Land and Ancestors, Cultural Dynamics in the Urnfield Period and the Middle Ages in the Southern Netherlands, Amsterdam Archaeological Studies, Amsterdam University Press, 1999, ISBN 978-90-5356-278-9. Topic. External links Media related to Urnfield culture at Wikimedia Commons